Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything, number 273. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. This is, uh, what is today? April the 2nd, Tuesday, April, April 2nd. 2nd. So Chris has got some things he's got to do, so we're we're doing it remotely again. As you can see, he is in the cave, and I am at the site of The Daily Show. Uh, Chris, how you doing, man? We hadn't talked in like a week. Yeah, busy work. This is this is about to start my uh, insane busy season, and then uh, and then also in the middle of starting another company, and it's just piling on more. But that's good. I like it. It keeps yeah. me busy. Keeps me out of trouble. Keeps you out of trouble. Absolutely. Uh, the other business and whatnot. I'm sure we'll be talking at some yeah. point about that. But but we ain't gonna bring it up today. No, uh, so <laughs> let's let's talk about what we're going to discuss today. Uh, we'll talk a little bit of the NFL team totals that came out. We're going to open the show with the final four. First off, though, different sponsor starting this month, mybookie.ag. You can use promo code WCE50 right now. You get a 50% deposit bonus. So you put in 100 bucks, you get 50 bucks for free. You put in 1000 bucks, you get 500 bucks for free. Like that's how this works. My bookie best in the business, amazing sports book. They got good stuff. Uh, we have we have used them before. They are fantastic. So go check it out, mybookie.ag. Use promo code WCE50. Now, after that, if you are getting into Major League Baseball gambling and you need help like I do, go over to trendybets.com, promo code MLB150. That'll get you their $500 season-long package for only 150 bucks. They are already up on the season over $400 for a regular $100 better. It would have already paid for itself. That's that's all I'm saying. They average for a regular $100 better over $6,300 in profit per season. That's pretty, pretty good. good. That's a, You agree with that, Chris? That's pretty strong. That's pretty strong. Over $6,300 average per season if you just bet with them. That's all I'm saying. You want winners? Go over to TrinityBets.com. They got free picks on the site. You can go check it out for yourself. They only give you a few of them, but you can see whether or not they're legit. I'll vouch for them. They got good stuff. TrinityBets.com is the place to go. Sign up for their MLB full season package. It's only $150 if you use promo code MLB150. That's TrinityBets.com. Now, Chris, let's dive into this thing. The Final Four is set. Uh, let's go over some of the Elite Eight stuff, though. We, we didn't really... I didn't talk about it much on the Daily Show. Let's talk about uh, – let, let's start with this. Let's start Saturday afternoon. Texas Tech, Gonzaga, 75-69. The Red Raiders get to their first Final Four. Gonzaga, I I told you before the season – or before the uh, the tournament that I really believed in Gonzaga. But, man, they got an absolute crap draw here. Texas Tech is absolutely legit. Oh come on now! Everybody's playing good teams right now. When you yeah, get this far, okay, when get you get to the draw. elite eight, nobody's got a bad draw because all eight teams were good. Yes, I agree with and that. You know what? I don't, I don't know this, what would have happened with Gonzaga only, and Michigan look, State. Look, this is the only blowout of the weekend, and, and it wasn't. It wasn't even a blowout. Uh, I mean, it was seventy-five to sixty-nine. But okay, I mean, yeah, you're right. You're right. This is, is well. You're right. Okay, yeah. It's Correct. the only one that didn't come down like to the last second. To so the last possession. To eat yeah. or the last possession to send it to overtime. Some of the games got into overtime. They got a little out of hand. That's different. Um, yeah. but but they yeah, you're right. It, the the regular the regulation of play, I'm trying to figure out how I want to say this, um, came down to the last possession in all the other games. Yeah. It um pretty Hatchamora had 22 points. He Especially in the first half, he looked like he was just going to take over. Uh, Jared Culver, 19 points. Again, I cannot talk highly enough about Chris Beard and what he has done. You know, last year, he took a sub-100 freshman, turned him into a, a top-20 draft pick in the first round of the NBA draft. This year, Jared Culver, who is a sophomore, he was another sub-100 player that he brought in that people thought, okay, like he's, he's a good piece. You know, we'll see what happens. He's going to be a top 10 pick this year. Like, it, what they are doing on defense, what he has been able to do on offense, Texas Tech over the last uh, 12 games before this game, they were the number one most efficient offense in the country. 
Now, on the season, they were like number 29. But in the 12 games prior, they were the number one defense and the number one offense. Chris Beard is otherworld right now. If if UCLA really wanted to go get a good coach, is there any price tag that would be too high for this guy? Uh, well, I mean, okay, yeah, any price tag would be. But at some point in time, if you paid him like the upper echelon guys, is, is he worth got in, making at Kentucky? Yeah, if you got into the six to nine money, then then I think I think it'd be hard to not walk away from. I mean, it'd be hard to walk to turn that down. It'd be hard to say. I don't want to go live in LA. And obviously, um, the Pac 12s having issues and the um the program at UCLA is not what it used to be. But this dude's doing it in Lubbock. So so I mean if, if he can do it in Lubbock, then he could do it in LA. Yeah. I know that. The oh, I, I agree. I think the talent would be fine eventually way yeah. better. Talent would be completely different. And there's no question, listen, there. They ain't no Kansas out in the, in the Pac-12 right now, okay? Yeah. Washington's good. Arizona's been good the last couple of years. And those those teams are bad. Those are getting better at basketball. Arizona's kind of always been a basketball school. But but there's there's no big dog out there. Well, and right? you don't know what's like you don't know what's happening with Arizona, right? That's right. Well, that's right. Self uh, uh, um, Miller might not even be there. And and I guess the same could be said for the Big 12 if if self gets somehow bounced or, or, or let go. Even you know. still, though, Texas Tech compare, uh, compared to UCLA, it, it's not even close. It's, it's not close. It's not. You're right. But there's no. something to be said for this guy. You know, he, he coached there before under Bobby Knight. And and I don't know. He's, he's a very good coach. The teams way overplay uh, the, the standard or caliber that, that they are based on recruiting rankings and, and who they're supposed to be. Um, and uh, they outperform every every metric there is. They're, yeah, they're I agree. really they, tough. They that historically, defense well, is Lubbock Lubbock crazy. is tough to bring talent into. Right, oh, no, no, it's no. always has been. So if you want to go to Lubbock, you really want to go play for Coach Beard. And or there are guys that a lot of other options to go and start. Yeah, I mean that could be the other thing is is hey this guy's taken not NBA guys and made them NBA guys. And if I go to any of these other schools, I'm going to be a backup, and I'm never going to become an NBA guy because that just doesn't happen to backups. So yeah. I, so I can go to Lubbock, and and I can and I can hope this guy can do some some transformation with me and my game. Yeah, no, I'm with you. So Texas Tech looks really, really good. They're playing at a high, high level. I think they kind of get overshadowed a little bit by Auburn, and we'll get to them here in a little bit. But uh, let's move on to the uh, Saturday night game, which I think was the best game of the weekend, Purdue and Virginia. Virginia wins 80-75 to 75 in overtime. Uh, you and I were, were texting back and forth during this one. It was absolutely bonkers. Uh, I mean, what, what can you even say about the game? It was, you know it was what, everything I mean, you could ask for. It is, and it was so exciting. My only issue is, is I've kind of always been a big team guy. I just am. And, and the and the better team won, and you, you hate seeing uh, Carson Edwards lose after a performance like that, but nobody else on his team had double digits. and no, that Nobody had more than seven points. No, yeah, so, yeah, they didn't get to eight or nine. And the other thing that, that was kind of fitting for that game, no matter how great he played, we're, we're in a group text with some guys. I'm not going to call them out right now, but uh, we were texting back and forth on it, and – they were like, oh, yeah, there's no doubt that he was going to bumble that pass. It's the first pass he made all night. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, he blew the pass. Guess what? That's because he doesn't pass the ball. Yeah. And and I thought it sucks because the, the Herculean effort that he put in on that game, pretty incredible. But at the end of the day, Purdue has been good when other guys get shots, when they can shoot the three ball and other players are getting involved. And and I don't know, was that designed by the coaching staff to just say, hey, man, you're hot, you're just in heat check, just go, and you take everything, and we'll figure it out? Or was it him just saying, the rock stops with me, um, I'm going to carry this thing, but, but, brother, this is a team of multiple people out there, we're in this together. So there were so Purdue had nine total assists on the night. Carson Edwards had 42 points, but then he had two rebounds, zero assists. 
zero assist. Yeah. yeah. That, no, 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 no joke. When they said, when Cat takes his pass, that, that's his right. first pass of the night. That, that, no, that's not a joke. That's his no. first pass of the night. Now you, you got that right. And then you see Virginia on the other side who, uh, rather like anybody else in that situation, when Clark got that back tap with, you know, just a couple of seconds left, anybody else in the country sees how much time is left and just chucks the ball up there. That's right. right. And he sees Diakite makes the perfect pass and, and he gets it off like a little mid range jumper, man. That, that was a cool play in the heat of chaos. Yes. And, um, a, a really good podcast I listened to today was um, the Bill Simmons podcast where him and Rosillo talk. And neither one of these guys are big uh, college basketball dudes, but they watched all the tournament and, and all this stuff. And they kind of got into the history of why college players do things differently than most NBA players is because they're still young. They're still 18, 19 year old kids. They get into panic mode and he oh, yeah. harkened back to, uh, Chris Weber and panicking and and like when he called that timeout before he calls the timeout he takes like four or five steps like he's already known I've messed this up and I don't know what to do the fact that the players for Virginia kind of kept their heads about themselves when I could almost see any other opportunity it just go to chaos and nobody knows what to do and somebody just throw it at the backboard and hope it goes in I, I think and, that comes from their coach I think that's all. I would like to, I, I'll, I'll credit to that. I'll credit to the kids just, you know, maybe being more than just basketball players for nine months uh, at Virginia. Not a lot of these guys are one and done. Um, I, you know, Virginia's, I guess, more of an academic institution than most state schools. Uh, but, but it was, it was hard to see watching Purdue and, and, and Edwards play the game he played. But I mean, the better team won. Yes, yes, and covered by the way. <laughs> God, I have no idea how that happened, but that's, I'm still a little. Well, that's what happens when you get into overtime. Like yeah. you crush someone's soul like that, and now, hey, now you got to go play another ten minutes. Oh yeah, and that's tough. And well, how tough is this? I mean, think about Ryan Klein, who had 27 points against Tennessee, had yep. seven three seven. pointers in the second half, and and then misses the free throw that would have yep. won the game. That's it. You know, like it would have put them up by four instead of three. In that situation, you never have the back tap. You never have any of that stuff. Him, so, him, him, not, him not being able to get into a rhythm and make anything the whole night was tough. But, but once again, how much of that is one guy dominating all the shots and not allowing him to get in the rhythm? Yeah. And I don't know the answer to any of that stuff. I watched the game. It was an incredible game. Once it got into overtime, I felt this thing's over, man. Yeah, I didn't that's... look at what the live line was, but I'm gonna bet it was pretty. It was pretty heavily um, uh, Virginia. When, when Purdue got up by ten, it was Virginia plus three and a half. Well, that was early in the game. I'm talking about in overtime. In overtime. I'm going to bet Virginia would have been a, a a nice favorite. Yeah, they were they were a favorite as soon as it went to overtime. No doubt. Um, no question. But it wasn't by much. I think it was like a point and a half, two points, something like that. Okay. That would have shocked so, me. I'd, I'd have thought it had been four or five, just because. No, no. It, I it, felt like Purdue was. I felt like watching the game. This thing is over now. These guys. And it, don't honestly, it really any. wasn't. Like it, no, it wasn't. You know, it was still. It was still heated in in overtime. They they were still close. They were still yeah. within possessions of of being able to win the game, but. It it looked mentally like they just didn't have anything left. Yeah, no, you're you're right about that. You are right about that. Um, let's talk about Auburn and Kentucky on Sunday afternoon. Uh, no, uh, no Chumo Kiki. Man, that, that didn't matter. Was, that was tough. That was that, tough though. Yeah, that was that was tough for them to uh, to lose him against North Carolina. But I mean, they still shot North Carolina straight out of the gym. They come out in this game. They shoot seven out of twenty three from three point range. Just insane. But Harper if, and Brown are just so, – when they're hot – I've said yeah. this this entire time. If those guys are right, there is nobody in this tournament, there's nobody in the country when Auburn is hot that's beating them because you can't guard that. Yeah, and well, that's the thing. They So they weren't really uh, that hot, right? Harper got 26 points. Brown had 24. 
Uh, let's see. Let me look at the box scores for well, They got it points. all. They got it all late in the first half, and then and in the second half. In the second half, the first. You're you're right. The the beginning of the game, they started out as cold as they could be. Yeah. There was there was the definition of lid on the bucket, and they were getting ran out by Kentucky. Well, and what then, what happened though uh, is Kentucky knew that they had to run them off the three point line. That's right. And when they did that, it opened up lanes for them. And Harper is just smoking fast. Oh yeah, right? no, no, he's got speed. He has got crazy because the everybody knows that you play him to where he's got to go to his left, and they tried. And Tyler Hero and everybody else that they put on him couldn't get in front of him fast enough. And he kept going to – like, he was able to get around him on his right side. So, he – I mean, he had layup after layup, especially in overtime. That's it. I mean, well, yeah. it was he, over and over and over again. Harper ended up 26 points. Uh, he was only one of six from three, which is pretty crazy. But he was right. 11, 11 of 11 from the free throw line. Perfect. Just, I mean, you want to talk about important? That's yeah. That's big. That's Stones, man. That's yeah. Stones. Uh, Kentucky played an awful game. And this seems to happen to Calipari's bunch a lot in the tournament. Um, 57% from the free throw line, uh, 23% from three. They were they were just not good. Like, just overall. It, it was super surprising. They had a, a massive size advantage, and they only out-rebounded Auburn by five rebounds. So I, I'm very interested in this. I'd like to go back and see how many of these super one-and-done teams have actually ended up winning this thing because one of the reasons I like North Carolina so much is, is they don't have a lot of one-and-done dudes. Now, they got a couple. They got some NBA guys, but they got some guys that have been there for a while. They got older guys. Yeah. Uh, same with Michigan State. Um those are the reasons I'm picking those two teams when this whole thing started. And obviously North Carolina got beat, but I think it takes veterans. And if you look at who's made it to the final four, all of these teams, now they got some NBA guys, but, but very few, if any are ever are going to be one and done. Well, I, so I this year there are no one and dones left. Uh, oh yeah. Cause at least not lottery guys. Right. Yeah, I was about to say Virginia's got a, 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 a freshman that's going to play NBA ball. Right. Uh, I don't think so. Um, oh, God. I might be wrong here. How about this? I'll look right now. Da, da, da. Is guy not an NBA guy? No, but he's he's a he's not a freshman though. Uh, no, Hopkins is a not Hopkins. Uh, what's the guy's name? Maybe it is Hopkins. De, no, DeAndre Hunter. Uh, he's a sophomore. Okay. So and right. and he'll be you know doesn't matter if he's not if he's not. So yeah. So none of these guys are one up. Villanova won it a couple years, you know, last year, whatever. They're not one and done guys. Like, if you look back, all those North Carolina teams that have won, Roy Williams won three with North Carolina. He just doesn't do it with one and dones. It takes experience in this tournament. Like, this is not a tournament that you can come into and say, I've never played anything like this. Now let me dominate it. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. It, it, it does not happen. So, Cal's way of playing ball is just never going to consistently win. Now, every now and then you'll get a guy like Anthony Davis who is just well, an absolute freak and, and say, and I'm going to win. Let me tell you this. Uh, that that year yeah. that Cal won the championship, yeah. remember he had guys that stayed in extra That's right. Year. That's right. He uh, had guys from the year before. Well, and the reason that he had those guys is that was when the NBA lockout stuff was happening. That's, that's exactly – I remember that now. Yep. Yep. So, you got to have veterans to win. I fully believe that. There's and, there's only and, been two teams that were predominantly one and done guys and that was Duke with two uh years ago, right? Uh with Okafor and that bunch. Yeah, that was 2 years ago. That was was that 2 or 3? That was like the 2015 season. I think it was I think it was yeah, but it, I I think it was 2 years ago. I don't the Villanova won it last year, Duke won it the year before. No, 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 no. Villanova won last year. North Carolina won the year before. Villanova right. won the year before that. So it's been four years. Oh, it's been four. That's right. Oh, yeah. Okafor's been out of league for a while. We're getting old, aren't we? <laughs> All this shit goes on too fast. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Okay. Uh, you're you're, the you're only right. The other it, NBA lottery guy that is left in the tournament right now is Jared Culver. And he is uh, – mock drafts have him going 11 to Minnesota. Um Virginia's DeAndre Hunter is slated. And Culver's, under- a, Culver's, a, Culver's a sophomore, right? Yeah, sophomore. And then uh, DeAndre Hunter's a sophomore as well yeah. from but, uh, from Virginia. You, you you can have NBA guys. I think you got to have NBA guys to win this thing. Oh, yeah. 
but but I just think the one and done, if your team is made up of three or four of those guys, which Kentucky always is, then then the expectation for them to win is just so slim. It's just so small. And, you, and I said this, I said the same thing with Duke this year. Look, I know Zion is an absolute monster. And I know Coach K is supposed to be the best coach in basketball, but but without He's Zion got having a, a Herculean months. record, yeah, like Herculean effort, they're they're mediocre at best. And those and they got three lottery picks on there. I mean, it's ridiculous. And but I've got my it, opinion it, about how I think those guys are gonna end up in the NFL, NBA anyway, but but it's just one of those things where, you know. I want some older guys. I want some people that have been there, that have been through this fight before, that have, you know, had their girlfriend break up with them before a game and it didn't devastate them and and whatever because they're now, you know, 20 years old and yeah. 21. They've, they've lived a little bit more life than 18, wide-eyed and wild as college campuses. Well, well, and and that's school. the thing, right? There's, there's not a ton of guys on Kentucky that are one-and-done guys. So, like – Not this year. Not it, this year. They're right. Yeah, so, if they stay next year, they will be a hot pick for me. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I, I don't know that P.J. Washington uh, is going to stick around. Uh, he's he's the constantly. one guy I really want to stay. Yeah. Keldon Johnson – yeah, uh, no, he, he had have. 14 and 10. He is uh, projected to be a lottery pick. Uh, Ashton Hagens is predicted to be a first round pick. And he's, and, a, and you know, how Cal is. If you're going to go in the lottery, I mean, he'll tell these guys flat out, I don't care about winning national championships. If you're going to be in the lottery, you're going to make 20, 30 million dollars. I'm taking your scholarship because yep. you're a damn fool. I didn't do my job teaching you well enough to how to, how to make smart decisions if I'm going to let you stay in college for a yeah. year when you can go make, you know, now they won't make 20 million the first year, but that contract and the lottery, you know, it's, it's, it's nice money. Advertising deals can't pass that money up. You just know you're, you're right about that. Um, you are, you were dead on right about that one. One of uh, the reasons I still am in the tank for Cal. I don't, well, I don't care about championships as much as no coach cares about his kids the way Cal does. Well, and, and in all honesty, uh, he's run up against some really hot teams, and that happens in the tournament. That's right. So, this is people the talk about Cal being overrated. Tournament to win. This is the single hardest tournament to win in sports. Yes. And the fact that we have this expectation that if you don't have two or three or four, then then you're not worth a crap is just ridiculous. It's well, just I mean, insane. You, One you team gets to me. win this damn thing. You can't tell me that Jay Wright is a better coach than Calipari. He's not. He's just but, not. But he's got two national championships. Yeah, right? and, and he's been to more championships than Cal's been to. Well, no, no he's, he's been to two, and Cal's been to three. Been to three. He's been to so, three. He's, he's lost one. Yeah, well, no, he lost He lost two. So he lost, he lost the one with Memphis. Yeah. And then no, he I'm lost not talking about Kentucky. Cal. I'm talking about Jay Wright. Now oh, yeah, Jay Wright. He, he won both of them that he's been to. I thought he lost one. No, no, no. Villanova has not lost one. At Villanova... Honestly, I don't believe that they've made it out of the first weekend without winning the tournament. Damn, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, because that, that was Jay Wright's thing three, you know, three years ago before he won the NCAA tournament for the first time. He couldn't get out of the like, first weekend. He couldn't get out of the first weekend. So everybody thought that, that his style of play wouldn't work in the tournament, and then he broke through. And, and now that's all the style of play that people run. Exactly, where it's three-pointers, and, and if you get hot at the right time, I mean, that's that's what Auburn's done, that's, right? That's, that's exactly it. And you all can't right. have one guy be the three-point guy. Everybody's got to be the three-point guy. Everybody's got to be able to shoot them. That's that's the way it goes. Uh, Michigan State and Duke, let's talk about this for a minute. This is the, the battle of the Goliaths here, man. Ooh, boy, 68-67, Michigan fantastic State wins. Fantastic game. What, what a fantastic story. To have uh, what's the kid's name? Goins, yes, uh, hit that three pointer, and his it was a walk on. Yeah, his parents are still in debt. He turned down D one scholarships. His the parents are still seventeen thousand dollars in debt. Yep, for him to go and be able to play for Coach Izzo. I'm gonna tell you this: we know how this game works. That seventeen thousand dollars has been paid off already. Before oh, we, yeah, we're yeah, talking that, on Tuesday, this game happened Sunday night. That seventeen thousand dollar debt's been somebody stroked a check for that. Yeah. No, you're, and you're they right damn well should have. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Michigan State, they looked like the stronger team, the more mentally prepared team. Zion Williamson had one shot attempt in the last six minutes and 54 seconds of this game. When the second half came out, 
and he scored the first 10 points. They went on a 10-0 run against Michigan State. I got nervous. And then I realized, oh, wait, Zion has all 10 of those points. No, this is fine because the law of average, he can't physically keep doing this, and yeah. he didn't. And nobody else stepped up big. No, you're, you're right. Um, overall, Duke played six guys. They, they played uh, eight guys total, and six of them had more than three minutes. There were two of them that only played three minutes apiece. Uh, same thing with Michigan State. I mean, they, they played their yeah, starters. They don't, play, they don't play a lot of guys. No, they, they played five guys that all got over 30 minutes each. And then they had uh, Ward that had 13 minutes and then Brown that had three minutes. And that was it. Like, this was starters on starters, and it was a fantastic matchup from the word go. Uh, this, I mean, this was another fantastic game, and Duke's luck finally ran out. Uh, how much did it hurt them? Like, I, I was surprised at, at Coach K for not just having his guys take some fouls earlier in the second half. I was, like I was so I was so pissed off during this game because the second half I'm thinking I'm watching and, and and this is not a knock on Zion and it's really not a knock on the refs either they just don't know how to to call him because yeah. you could call charge on on every play with Zion and you could realistically probably call block on every play because he's hitting somebody or oh, somebody's yeah. hitting him he he it's, looks like an old school player doesn't he. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to digress for just a minute. On that podcast with uh, Simmons and Rosillo, they had the conversation of everyone. Rosillo knows LeBron, and and he says, everyone always used to have the conversation in Cleveland, like, oh, LeBron could play tight end. He said, listen, I'm sure LeBron was great in high school at wide receiver because he was so much bigger than everybody else. LeBron is scared of contact. He does not like contact, doesn't enjoy contact. No, no, no. Zion would be the best basketball to football player and he said and I wouldn't even touch him on tight end I would put him at edge rusher and I would have him wreak havoc because that guy likes contact yeah that guy wants it he thrives off of it yeah he he really really does uh, now I was really surprised at this stat so Roger Sherman from the ringer shared this uh RJ Barrett in the closing minute of the three losses that Duke had with Zion on the floor he was 0 for 9, Zion was 0 for 1, and the entire rest of the team combined was 0 for 2. Yep, yep. I, I want to see the GM that talks himself into R.J. Barrett over Ja. Please, please. I want to I see that guy, and then I want to see paperwork drawn up to have him terminate it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, but it, it's possible to happen. It, I know, it won't shock me because he's going to look great in the combine. He's oh, yeah. gonna, when nobody's guarding him and nobody else is on the court and he's just shooting basketballs at a hoop, he is going to look outstanding. Oh, yeah. I mean, and he, he wasn't bad in this game. I mean, no, it, no, he had, a good, he had a good first half of the game and, and a yeah. good end, second half. He, he just, was 7 out of 17 from the field, 3 out of 6 from 3. He just died um, at the end of the game when it most mattered. But yeah. My issue with the other guys that are supposed to be lottery picks for Duke is, is they don't play with – any type of real intensity. They, they, they look great when nothing matters. And when everything is on the line, they come up as small as they can come up. All of those other games that Duke won by one or two to, to get to this point through this tournament and through the ACC tournament, that was all Zion at the end. It was none of them making big shots. It was none of them saying, I've got this killer instinct in me, like Kobe, like Jordan, where I can just put daggers in you to end this game and walk us off. They don't have that gene. I don't think you can train that gene into somebody. I think you've got to have it, or you don't. They just don't have it. They'll never be the best player on their team ever again. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I think you probably they they might have peaked in high school. Yeah, take them take them fifth overall, take them second or third overall. Go ahead and do that because yeah. you'll set the franchise back. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. So Michigan hey, State. So hang on. I want I want my boy, my guy, my boy. Finally, finally getting to another Final Four. Been a while for him. It's been a hard road. When oh. when was his last uh, Final Four? Oh man, it's I'd have to look that up, and I'm not. I'm I'm looking up right I now. Say, I'm not. I'm not prepared. My laptop is screen's too small to, to be able to manipulate that and do it. Um, <laughs> but uh, but no. He, here's the thing. He was 11 and one against against Coach K. 
That's a, it, it hadn't been that long. It was 2015. It's his final four. Yeah, but okay, but he didn't win. No, he didn't win. He he it's had a while since championship since 2000. Yeah, I was gonna say it's been it's been a while since he won a championship. Listen, I I love Izzo, love him to death. I think he's one of the best coaches out there. He builds programs that have a combination of great NBA talent with some veteran guys that are that know their role, play their role well. I think in this game, Tom Izzo. He beat Coach K, and it wasn't close. The reason Duke pushed this thing as close as they pushed is because they do have three or four NBA players on that starting roster that played out there, and Michigan State does not. Yeah. But other than that, I think Izzo, he called ev- – after every timeout, he called the perfect play. After every timeout, he seemed to call the perfect defense to stop Duke or to put him in a bad situation. And if Duke scored after a timeout, it was because Zion did something – absolutely amazing that just there's no defense for yeah. um and and probably were charges but that's that's neither here nor there um uh it, you know i i'm super excited for for izzo had him going to the championship game had him winning it in half my brackets and and i'm just i could not be happier with uh with michigan state coming out of that game Let's uh so let's move on and talk about the final four this weekend. Matchup, got it. Texas Tech, Michigan State. The line is Michigan State minus two and a half. Um look, I I, I gotta tell you, uh I like the favorites here. Like I, I I think getting to this point is is good enough for Auburn and Texas Tech. Um while Tech has been playing outstanding basketball, Michigan State is much better prepared for what Texas Tech brings. And, I I mean, I like their leadership. I like everything about this team. I like Michigan State to cover this two and a half here. So I do too. Um, I, this is a short line. It's a small line, so I, I'm definitely a fan of it. But uh, but also, I mean, Charles Barkley said it best in, in the in the postgame stuff. Maybe he did it in the pregame stuff. Cash Winston – He's not the best player in the tournament. He's not the best player left in the tournament out of the four teams that are there. Yeah, he might be. He's close, but 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 he he's not definitely. He's definitely the best leader that was in this tournament the day the tournament started. Yes. Um. And 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 that guy. What Izzo talks about, and he talked about it before the tournament started, was it takes a lot of things to win this thing, but the most important thing that it takes to win is mental toughness. Which yes. is why you need veteran players, older players, uh, experienced players over young stars, um, because they just don't—they're just not mentally tough. They're 18 years old. Um, they're they're still pretty fragile when it comes to to when they get pushed around, hit in the mouth, whatever, and um, a lot of pressure. I think this is the most mentally tough team I've ever seen him have. I don't know that they're going to win it. I don't know that they're going to beat Texas Tech. I don't know that they're going to get through Arizona or Auburn. But I know this. They're the most mentally tough team I've, I've seen play in this tournament in a long time, if not ever. Um, the, the Ken Palm projections. They've got Michigan State winning this one 67 to 66. Uh, Michigan State is number three at Ken Palm. Texas Tech is number five. That's the scoring total that I think it's going to be around. I don't know if it'll be a one-point game. I do think it'll be close, but yeah. I don't think it's going to be high scoring. I mean, one, 130, you know, that's, that's about where it is is where I think it's going to be. I think both these teams are going to play some good defense. I, I do agree. I think, uh, I think Texas Tech might tighten up a little bit, uh, and Michigan State could as well, but it, I, I think they tighten up a little bit. I mean, obviously, the, uh, the under on this is – 132 and a half. Whew. Okay. Uh, and I, the, I might the, still go over that. The Auburn Virginia game is 131. So, okay. you know, that's 67 for, to 66 is uh, 133. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, we'll, right. we'll see. But, uh, but yeah, it should be right around the total. Uh, Texas Tech, again, overall on the season, uh, number 30 in offensive efficiency, number one in defense. Michigan State, however, uh, number five on offense, number eight on defense. Yeah, top They're, ten uh, in both, and yeah. it just crazily well coached. Yeah, no, you're you're right about that. Um, you know, I, I, the one thing that that might give Tech a little bit of an advantage is Michigan State, number one seventy six in the country 
uh, as far as percentage of offensive possessions where they turn the ball over. So it's 18.5 percent. They they did get into some turnover trouble against Duke for a little bit. Yep. And That's I mean, long. I was getting highly frustrated. I th- highly and, frustrated. Is when I was listening to to Rosillo talk about guys panicking in college, I literally was thinking about those passes where the two players are just trying to hand the ball to one another and the Duke guy just pushes it away and, and runs down the like, and that happened two possessions in a row. And it was just like, come on guys, get it together. And then I hear him talk about how, man, I mean, just these guys are still fragile. And even though they know the play, they know the spacing, they know what they're supposed to do. Yeah. That still gets in your head and you can't do that against Texas tech. They're way better defensive team than Duke is. They yeah. just are. Uh, tech, like they they needed to be able to get hot from three, and they did it late. Um, but they Tech is another one of those that likes to shoot the ball uh, inside a lot, mm-hmm. and you know they don't take a ton of threes, but they might need to in this case. Uh, Michigan State's block percentage Pretty is good. number eighteen in the country. Pretty now good. Tech's is fifteen point five, uh, which is number six in the country, but. Yeah, it, it's going to be tough sledding for either team inside. inside. Michigan State has got a much better mid-range game. Yeah, um, like I, I like, I like Michigan State in this game. I, so we're both siding Michigan State minus two and a half here, right? No doubt, not going against Izzo. Okay, um, let's see. The next game is Auburn and Virginia. Auburn plus five and a half is the line. Uh, it seems like a lot of points, but. I mean, 77% of the tickets, 77% of the money are on Auburn right now, and they are not moving the line. Uh, I heard on the Action Network uh, podcast, The Favorites, and I think it was, I think it's the director of the sports book from MGM who said, yeah, we're not, like, that's our biggest liability, but we're not worried about it. Like we we fully believe in Virginia. He said, you know, we looked at the power ratings. We've adjusted slightly, but like, there's no. I, I wonder. To, I wonder how much of it is is they know late money is going to come in on Virginia. It, maybe, maybe that's it. But the other side of this is, okay, they played because like, your casual it, fan hasn't made a play yet. Well, Kentucky played awful, right, and. Kentucky played about as bad as you could possibly play. And Correct. even Virginia's worst game has not been as bad as what Kentucky played against Auburn the other day. We'll agree with that. Virginia's defense sets up much better against Auburn's guards than Kentucky's defense did. Uh, they've got faster guys. They've got a better scheme. Like this is Tony Bennett's bread and butter. Like he knows how to slow down teams like this. And when Auburn can't get up and run, what are they going to be able to do? So, it's going to be hard. Now, if they yeah. get it in a half-court game, then, yeah, Auburn is going to get smoked and it won't be close. Yeah, and that's I think that's why the total is only 131 in this game. Um, Chris Felica tweeted out – let me pull it up right quick. Um, let's see. Dating back to – all right, dating back to 2002, the last 13 national semifinal favorites have at least five points, are six and seven against the spread, nine and four straight up. Uh, favorites have won all six national semifinal games the last three years. They're four and two against the spread. Yep. And so I saw that as well. Yeah. Favorites are, are typically the play and that makes sense. Right. Um, I, I think I do like Virginia here. I think I like them to be able to, to drag Auburn down to the mud. I think in this game, it will matter a lot more that Okiki is not playing. Oh, no doubt. There is no question that they're going to feel that. So I I don't know that it – I mean, obviously it didn't matter as much against Kentucky. But in this game, uh, that's going to be a massive loss. And you, so, you also wonder, like, Auburn's first time here. And, yeah, it's Virginia's first time under Tony Bennett. But I, I don't get the feeling that Virginia is as euphoric or just happy with being there as Auburn is. Ooh, I don't know. This is a team that got knocked out by the first 16 seed ever last year. Well, agreed. But I mean, I, I making it to the Final be. Four is pretty big for them as a redemption story. So, so let me tell you. Let me tell you what what I think about this game and and how I how I see it. I, I completely agree that Okiki is going to be. This is where they're going to feel him. I also think that Auburn 
could not have started out colder. Their best scorer made one three-pointer, and that was it, and they still were able to beat Kentucky. Um, so I think they had one of the worst shooting games that they've ever had, and they were still able to come up with a win. Now, you say Kentucky played bad. Well, well Auburn didn't play great. They were just – both played bad, and one team made more shots than the other team. Yep, okay. you're right. That was the one bad shooting game they had in them, and they were able to find a way to win it. I well, think they had a bad right. shooting game against uh, New Mexico State. All right, and they were able to win that one. Now, but, see, how crazy is this? If that kid from New Mexico State makes his, uh, makes his free throws, Auburn is, is out in the first round. Listen, I mean, that's fine. This, that's that's how this tournament how this, plays out. That's how this thing works. Look, you're an analytical guy. You you follow numbers more than anybody I know, and it bodes well for you. Look, I'm a dreamer, man. I'm just I'm just going to keep dreaming. <laughs> I, I love Bruce Pearl. I think he's the most likable coach in all of college basketball. And I I don't care what the NCAA says. I don't care what the FBI says. They can take all of their information. I know how the sausage is made, and I don't think they're any different than anybody else. I think they pick and choose who they go after, and and nobody will convince me otherwise because I know the dirt on the teams that they don't go after. With that being said, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna believe in magic. I'm just gonna keep riding this wave. I I think this. If Michigan State can't win it, I hope Auburn's holding that trophy at the end of the day. I really do. I want to see Bruce Pearl win one of these things. I, I, you know, I want to see this team come together. The, they lost their best player, and and they still had two guys combined for almost fifty points, or I, they might have combined for fifty points. Um, yeah, it was it was exactly 50, 26 exactly, to twenty five. It was right there. Um, I, I I just think I think this team plays as a team. I think they ride together. I think they've had their bad shooting game. I think this is going to be a bounce. They, they don't have too many bad shooting games back to back. I'll tell you that. Okay. If they have a bad shooting game this week against Virginia, it will be because Virginia took it away from them. But it yeah. won't it won't be because they're just off and missing shots. I, I will tell you that right now. They're going to be ready, and 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 you can you can say that you know they're happy to be here. Whatever, man. Those Virginia those Virginia kids. Look, dude, they, they didn't get out first day last year as the number one overall seed. You don't think they're just ecstatic to be here too? No, they, they might be. They might be. Uh, Three-point percentage-wise, uh, Virginia, number three in the country at giving up three-pointers. Yep. So no they are at 28.7%, and, and they were number one until Purdue went just bananas went, went, on them. Went hay on them, yeah. And, and that's – you know, you got to believe if you're a Virginia fan that, okay, our defense, like, wasn't able to handle Carson Edwards. And back to the Carson Edwards thing, some of the shots that he made were just completely outlandish, right? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, the Auburn guys, Brown was making those same shots. I mean, oh, he no. was – I was literally texting you. He's closer to the half-court line than he is the three-point line. Like, yeah. they talk about backing it up in college. Hell, there's nowhere for you to back it up to. I'm not kidding. Well, not with some of these guys, for sure. And some of those. He was closer to the half-court line. Than, you can't defend that. There's no defense for that. You're not running the guy off the three-point line four feet. Like, it's just not happening. No, no, you're right. So you're right. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride with it. Look. I haven't done great through this tournament. That's okay. That's all right. I have a good time with it. This is this is one of my favorite things in sports is the NCAA college basketball tournament. And uh, I'm, I'm going to keep playing it the way I play it. I'm going to ride right. with the coaches that I love. All right, so you're riding with Auburn on that one. You're riding with Michigan State on the other. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Virginia minus the five and a half here. I think Vegas is on to something. They, uh, they feel strong about it. I like siding with Vegas as opposed to the public. Uh, I've always been like that. You know that. I know that. So, I do too. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm the same way. So I'll I'll ride both favorites on this. Uh, Ken Palm has got it seventy to sixty four. Uh, I I like that. I think that's I think that's perfectly fine. So you know, and I'm guessing you and half, I. But that's a that's a half point edge. That doesn't scare me at all. No, like, that's half like point if the, if on the Italy. numbers if the numbers say I'm a half point going against the grain, then I feel just fine. Oh, just yeah. fine. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm not picking it based on on Ken Palm. Yeah, like I'm I'm picking based on I think that Virginia. Uh, well, they have better players, and and they probably statistically have a better coach. Yeah, no, but I don't know that many people are going to argue that. I just look, I'm not betting against Bruce Pearl. The I'm only sure. way I'm betting against Bruce Pearl is when he plays Izzo. 
I, I like that. I like yeah, that. I All right, let's, let's close up today's show. Let's talk about some NFL team totals. All right, yeah. So – which way would you like for me to go with this? Because I, I don't think I, we need to do all 32 God, right now. No, no I, have, I have no idea. Are there any that you like? Because there's seven that I like today, but I also believe we have no idea what these teams are going to look like because and we, don't we don't know, know what, the what they're going to draft. Like either. Well, I don't, we know the schedule in the sense of who they're playing where. Yeah, but you don't know like if you got back-to-backs. And, no, no, there are no back-to-back. What are you talking about? No, I'm, I like back, I'm, I'm talking back-to-back as far as like – if you got a really tough stretch of games, oh yeah, and we, you don't we, know where the we, bye week is going to be. That, I don't care yeah. about any of that stuff. I don't care about any of that stuff. You got to play the teams. You got to play them. It doesn't matter when you play them. Um, what what I care more about is the players that are there. So like, I don't know what to do with the Dolphins. I believe they're in full tank mode. But I mean, if they make a move for one of these good quarterbacks, do they say, "Hey, we're going to just throw him in there"? And the guy's good enough to win an extra two or three games, then now you you bet under and bust. You know, it, it's it's that kind of stuff that I don't know about the teams that I like, the picks that I like. Those teams are set and stable for the most part. And if I, they, uh, have, I'll tell you this, it'll make them better. I like under nine for the Green Bay Packers. Me too. That's one of mine. It, it doesn't make sense to me that they would go from seven wins to over nine. That that division is getting better and better. Yes. I think the Lions will be better. I think the Bears will be better. I think the Vikings will be substantially better. And um, I believe that one man cannot win in, in, in football. I believe that if you pay your quarterback 30 plus million dollars in a hard salary cap league, it is very hard to build a team around him. The Arizona Cardinals are at five. Not touching it. I'm staying away from that one, um, but that is an interesting number. If they drafted Kyler Murray, I, I I think I would go over. I think Kingsbury could do something with offenses that bother defenses enough in the first half of the year to win some early games. Yeah, uh, and so not to mention they've got the. Uh, on it, then I think they could shut it down, but they they've got the 24th uh, most difficult schedule. So yeah. it's it's the number eight easiest schedule. So at least based on wind per, uh, wind projections and all that kind of stuff. So this is all based on Warren Sharp's stuff over at Sharp Football. Um, let's see what else. Uh, give me so, give me some more of yours, right quick. Okay. So the so one team that I love that I love 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 I'm going to play no matter how they draft is the Bills plus six or, or six, and I'm going to go over that. Listen, Sean McDermott took this team to the playoffs with a just garbage roster. Last year, he still found a way to win six games with a garbage roster. They're getting better. They're getting they made better. some good off, off-field off moves. They, they made some moves. off-season moves. And then also, Jared Allen wasn't nearly as bad as people made him out to be. Like, we, we – people talked about him like he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. Man, that just didn't so. It's just not so. If they come out of this draft with a big receiver or, or, or they beast that offensive line, they had the worst offensive line in football last year. Um, if they if they get them any kind of help whatsoever and Shady has anything left in his legs, uh, I think they'll win six games. But hell, I think they could win seven or eight. Look, the Patriots aren't going to go ham on anybody this year. That we've, we've found out, Tom – they're just trying to get to January, okay? Yeah. They don't care if they're a wild card team. They don't care if they get the bye. They don't care. So, so the idea of them winning eleven games is ridiculous, or twelve games is ridiculous. I don't think that's happening. Um, and and the rest of that division, I th- I think the Dolphins are tanking. I think the Jets are still going to be bad. Um, and so you got a couple of built-in wins just in the division. Um, and not that the Patriots are built in win, but the other two are, I believe. And then then you'll go through the rest of your schedule. I like them a lot. I like the Bengals under at six. I don't think they're going to make a move at quarterback. I don't know if A.J. Green is going to be there at all most of the season. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that is a team that is in complete chaos. And they drafted like the ninth person that was connected to Sean McVay. So the chances of that guy being a star are just slim to none. Well, not, and, not to mention the Bengals have the number 10 most difficult schedule yeah. uh, based on this thing. Yep. Um, and then uh, one other I have is your Steelers under nine. Man, I, I just think losing Antonio Brown, losing Le'Veon Bell. I know they didn't have Bell at all last year, but you just can't let talent walk away like that. 
I, I think the biggest problem in that room has been. And, and and they've got the number uh, the number eight most difficult schedule. So that's that's another one of those. Um, so it, I, I'm I'm conflicted on the Bears here. Uh, the Bears are it's over nine and a half. Yeah, I, I, but, I love the Bears, but that scares me. I'm not. I wonder team like two wins. I wonder how good this team is without Vic. You know, like now they do have the uh, the fourth easiest schedule. In the league, but that's shocking. But I'm I'm a little surprised. Like it, nine and a half seems like a lot. They they won what twelve last year? Yeah, they won a lot. They traded away a running back for nothing. Yeah, that was uh, surprising. But to show, I guess a third round pick. But that that still shocked me. Um, and then um, and they cut the kicker. Well, that doesn't surprise me. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a that's a neutral move. Then I don't think they'll improve. I don't know that they'll get worse because of that. Vic Fangio is a big deal losing him. I just think he was a lot of that defense. Yeah, I think he was. Now I think Khalil Max a lot of that defense too. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not betting a lot of teams to go over ten wins. Multiple teams will. I don't know which ones they are though. The uh, the Broncos have the second easiest schedule, and they are at seven for their total. My uh, only problem is quarterback. Yeah, I, I wonder is Flacco going to be. You know, Flacco of old, which is good enough to get you eight, nine wins to to get you, you know, where you need to go. Um, but, I mean, they're in a tough division. They're a really that tough is, division. That is a really hard division with the Chargers and the Chiefs. I the, mean, that's uh, just a tough division. The Chiefs have the – where are they? Right. The Chiefs have the fifth easiest schedule. Oh, well, they're on the highest win total. Okay. And their win total is what, ten and a half? Ten and a half. Ten and a half. I, I think I'd probably go over on that. Them, them, the Rams, and the Saints are all at ten and a half, and the they're tied for the. And Saints. the Patriots are 11. eleven. So, and then the Chargers with ten, uh, the Colts, the Eagles, and the Bears at nine and a half. Uh, the Vikings with nine. I'm a little surprised at the Vikings. Not me. Uh, you know, may I, <laughs> they were bad last year. They they underperformed last year. They won't do that two years in a row. Uh, they've got the Jaguars at eight. That's too many. That's kind of what I was thinking. Like I, I like uh, I like Foles, but I just I still think that they've got problems. Oh yeah, I think they've got big problems. I think the I think the leader in the clubhouse is Jalen Ramsey. It's a big problem. Yeah, and they didn't get rid of him. No, no. So he's still running that yak. Yeah, uh, the Jets have the second. Uh, hardest schedule. That that's one team I've got on here on mine. There's seven. Yeah. I'm, I'm going under that. I, I just like don't believe seven. in Sam Darnold. I, maybe I'm wrong. I could be way wrong. I didn't like him in the draft. I, I was he he. I was least on him. I would have taken Rosen one. I would have taken. Um, I, I'm not going to say I would have taken Baker two because I didn't. I didn't. I didn't believe that. But 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 I I like Josh Allen. I like Lamar Jackson. I liked those guys. Way more than I liked Rosen. Uh, Adam I mean, Gates. Way more than I than I like Sam. Sorry. And so it, it's they're they're at seven wins. Adam Gase won ten games his first season with the Dolphins, and then went six and ten and seven and nine. Now that's a little misleading. Th that Dolphin team that he won ten games with that was loaded with talent. They they were pretty. They were they were doing really well with building that team. And then after that, and man, their schedule just, was significantly easier. Yeah, they went to crap with building that roster. They yeah. started letting everybody go. And and culture is important. There's nobody that'll convince me it's not. I'm a Patriots fan. That that I, I believe that. But I'm telling you it. You got to have the culture before you start getting rid of good players to develop a culture. The uh, they've got the Dolphins at five. That's uh, the one I, I'm not touching. Not touching that they, until we see what they do for a quarterback. If, right? if they draft a quarterback and start him immediately, and if Haskins is good, or if somehow they get Murray or something of that nature, then then I think I think they can say, hey, let's all right. We don't need to rebuild. We can make enough, you know, moves to 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 make this thing salvageable. And get a couple of couple of W's. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's you're, what's you're right. Five five's tough. Usually four is the smallest most any team is going to go. Rarely do you have teams lose less than win less than four games. Yeah, you're you're, five, you're dead on right about that. Um, 
Will, I'm, I'm sure that we will get more in depth with this once we get closer to the season, but because it is kind of a dead period, we did want to talk about that. Um, but that is going to wrap up the show. Uh, it is, it's 325, so it's time for us to get out of here and make sure this thing isn't too terribly long. Uh, but yeah, so as always, go over to mybookie.ag, use promo code WCE50, and get a 50% deposit bonus. Again, you put in 500 bucks, they're going to give you 250. Put in 100 bucks, they're going to give you $50 uh, for free. That's all you got to do. Just deposit money, and they will, they will match half of it, which is pretty awesome. So mybookie.ag, promo code WCE50. And go over to trendybets.com. It's the number one sports betting system in the country. Uh, MLB is going on right now. I know that you've got to be like me. You need some help betting baseball. They got all the trends. They got all the stats. They got everything. They got five systems that they use. They give you picks based on those systems. It's pretty awesome. Their $500 MLB package. You can get it with our promo code. It's MLB150. You get it for $150. Not too shabby. As always, share the show. Leave us some comments. Chris, we'll do this again next week. See you, buddy. All right. Later, buddy. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.